Greetings everybody. It's been a while hasn't it? I'm on a different phone camera now so it zoomed in a bit more automatically and we'll see how things go. This is Dr Benorium of his Hot Sauce Emporium. If you spend over 30 quid you often get a free cup. He's good in it and inside there's tea. Right then, something's behind it. I decided not to film the airbrushing video or the painting video because one, although I did get access to the loft, not the loft, the shed even, it occurred to me I need to buy a good face mask because the white ones I'm using are useless almost. On top of that, airbrushing, painting, is not really anything to do with the SCC kits, it's just modelling in general. So I might make videos on that one day, but I thought, no, nah, I'm going to just get on with this. So what I've done is, I've brush painted this, this wuss of buddy, and it's turned out, pretty good. Lined it. This is my first attempt with the bow pen and this panel here. And there's a little rough bit here if you can see it because I sprayed the Citadel Purity Seal satin varnish way too close and it completely burnt in. I had to basically rub it down and start again on that piece. And I didn't give it full effort because I just wanted to get this video out so yeah, lesson to be learnt. I always basically paint them, spray it with a purity seal, and then I can put a colour on top of it. Or a different finish rather. So this now is a standard, but I take my engines before I put the last details on. So, so we're going to add hand rails, we're going to add the boiler pipe, the reverser rod, coupling your um, vacuum brakes, tender connector, the little hand rails here. Although it has a whistle, I'll show, I'll show you them later. Um, we need to add the, uh, what do you call it, sand pipes. And that'd be about it. So, for the handrails, I used to use brass wire. And then I used to basically paint it with solder, or paint it with paint. And then I thought, what a numpty, why don't I just get some of this? Nickel silver, 0.45mm wire. No brainer really. When you buy your handrails, the new have always come in the same size, which is to fit the 0.45mm diameter. So pretty much get that. And just if you can see there. It's always worth labelling these little boxes, it makes life so much easier. So I've got handrail knobs medium. Right? Handrail knobs long. Now for the K2, I hope you can see that the smoke box sticks out more than the boiler. Okay, so for the boiler, we're going to use uh, long handrail pillars, and for the smoke box, medium. That's the same with the Freelance variants, apart from the V4, because the V4 has the boiling and the smoke box basically flush. All right, so. We're going to need, I've already drilled them out, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, on this one you're going to need six long ones, two medium, and same for the other one. I'll just pause and take them out of the bag, I'll then bore you, boring you to death. Okay. Got two there, six there. And you get your wire. Okay, first things you just literally measure off, it's not hard. So give yourself a bit of excess about there. Right. I sort of just do it longer just so you've got something to grab hold of. I'll just do this one the same. Okay. Now what I find with these is, they usually will just thread on without too much of a problem, but not always. A bit fiddly, this is definitely fiddly. What I find is, if you hold the base tightly in a pair of pliers, I doubt you're going to see that, maybe you will. There's a little hole, and this should just thread straight through. Now 
There you go. Okay, so it's in. Now, just going to solder that. I use a 145 solder, put that towards the end, just put a little dab of flux on, So that's just captured it. A little piece that sticks out at the end well, should be about right because it continues a little bit before it hits the cab. So you can clip it off or you can keep it. I'm just going to clip it a little bit. That's the only one that I usually bother to solder. Sometimes the last one I'll do as well. And now you just got to thread the rest on. Like I said, it's not exactly interesting. It's a bit fiddly. There's one. Seems that this camera doesn't want to focus much either. Basically, I broke my old phone. So, that's why I'm on this one. three. Now, now you've got three of the long ones on, you want to put one of the small ones on. Well, medium, not, not small, it's medium, isn't it? Okay. Now, With the one that you've soldered on, I'm trying to stick that in the hole. If it's too big, you just have to drill the hole out very slightly. One thing, get a pair of pliers and just hold it. And you can just nudge it in. Apply a bit of pressure. Nope, too small. Drill the old hat. <laughs> so, that's in. And I've chipped on paintwork, but never mind. Right. Now it's a case of secure that one. Um, you can glue it, little tiny blob of super glue from the outside, or if you can get from the inside, which on this one you can't. I sometimes melt things in, I cheat. Right. It's a bit risky when you've already painted it, but just get it straight. I'd only do this if you're competent, or if you, you know, you feel it's you're going to achieve it. Touch a pillar. That's it. You see, it goes soft. You see the plastic behind it just kind of melts slightly, but it's got it. Sort of glued it, but that should be adequate. If the angle's wrong. Which it probably is because it's pretty much horizontal. You want it in a slight this sort of angle. Well, you can just bend it up a little bit. Um, should be able to see how it goes. Right, the next ones with your pair of tweezers. Try to get the next one in. It's very fiddly.
and awkward. But it's got it. Okay? It's got it. There's no glue there. Next one. No, it's still a bit too tight. The reason I put these on after the paint work is because I just find it a bit awkward painting around them. Obviously, like here where I've scratched it, you risk it, but I'll just touch it in. So it's up to you if you want to do this before you paint it. Right, I'm going to give that a little touch. Slight melting effect. And I'm going to adjust this one so the angle changes. Okay, last one. good. That's a nice friction fit. Now with this last one I tend to just put a little teeny, 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 teeny bit of solder. Just attack it. Clip, Clip off the end. Okay, so, could have done it a little, a little bit neater, maybe if it just didn't bother melting it, it would have worked. You see this one sticking in more than that one, if it focuses that is. But you get the idea, that's basically how you do handrails, it's just a case of take more care, take more time, do have more practice, be better at it, etc, etc. The pillars though, obviously brass, um, this is nickel silver coloured, so to get them all sort of silver coloured, more so with a brass engine where you're not going to melt everything, but you can sort of solder paint. Not you not use solder paint, but solder it to paint it. Or you can just use actual paint, which I'll, I will do for this. Just touch it in. No need to show that. Though. Okay, that's one side. The other side, exactly the same. Okay. The other thing is as an option, the front of these, on the, on the proper K2s at least, you'd have... There's a little hole here and a little hole here. Okay, they, will, they will need drilling out a bit more and you can put in a curved one okay I'm not going to bother with this engine but I'll just explain how to do it it's the same principle you can see the little holes here if it focuses on the FUD one one there one there and they've there basically as a pilot so you just Drill it out. Because it's a thin though. You've got to be careful. Because that one I went a bit too far, but this one I didn't, so it's just skill point I guess. <laughs> Alright, but yeah, you'll basically do the same thing. Solder the first one as attack, bend your wire around and put the next one in. And you can do it with these if you want to, but I'm not going to bother with this. So, let me just pause the video and I'll come to the next bit.
Okay, reverse rod. When I can find where I've just placed it, that is. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Need to clean this desk up. Okay. The reverse rod you see has two little rivets here and is angled in a special way. However, I recognise it's not exactly the ultimate infidelity, so if you wish to just throw this away and use brass rod or some something like this with a scrap itch, you know, great. Gonna be my guest. I'll be working on edges at some point in the future anyway. But not for a while. Okay, this one. See, there's a little hole here. This just kind of butt joins to the hole and just gently sits in it slightly. And then the other piece just butt joins against the arm, and that's about it. So I've just dipped it back in super glue. And I'm just going to go for it. Little tiny dab on the outside of that. Get your tweezers. And that's it. Fitted. You can see the angle a bit easier now, where it kind of goes there and then almost straight at the bottom. So that's fitting the reverse rod. Piece of pie. Oh yeah, two other things I mentioned. I don't think there's much point demonstrating it. Just above the steps, there's two little sort of half indented holes. Drill those out and put a piece of handrail wire shaped just like a grab rail. Okay. If you put one end longer, it's easier. Whether I need to really do that to show you, I don't really know because it's pretty much what we've been doing anyway. Same as putting the brakes on, I mean, the, the brake uh, pipes, I don't know if that really needs to be demonstrated. Because you, you just glue it on, you know, I don't have to show you that. Same as the buffers, you just glue them on. Um, this little hole here, if you put if you put like a scale hook on, you'll have to draw that out a bit more or file it so it's got more of a, more of a slot. Um, depends what sort of... Uh, which company's coupling rods you're going to use, or they've all got different dimensions. But that's how you do that, you drill a hole, file it a bit, and bungle in and glue it. Or if you want it to spring up and down, then you don't glue it. Um, and again, these are the holes here. You know, for the uh, sand pipes. I'll have to get this relative to the chassis in a minute. But something else I need to show you. Remember this, the prototype bus of K1, to K2 even. I had to take the valances off, because we went to Model Railway Club, where they had tighter curves, so I had to take those off. And I've snapped the brake pipe. <laughs> Never mind. These guard irons, again, you just glue them on, okay? Relative to whatever gauge you have. I don't need to show you me gluing it on, it's just, it's so simple. Okay, now you see here is like a little goal post, right, that is for, on the tender, this little hook. Simple as that. And just a little note, this tender, the front detail is very different now, because I found some more references, so it's been improved a lot. You just do that with this, and away you go. So just to get a bit of impression, what's it going to look like? There ain't much to do now, it's not enough done. Yeah. Quite nice, I think.
Oops. Okay. I'll finish it off soon and then show you the result. Something I wish to show you. As I mentioned before, this whistle here that came with the kit, but in the early days some orders got cancelled because they then decided, oh no, we don't want to print the whistles now. So I have to take them off. But what I've done is I've made some whistles with a slightly fatter internal dimensions to compensate. Okay. Small little item. It's available in different materials. This is printed in actual brass. There's three different whistles, basically the same basic design with different heights. And the base is a little longer so you can just drill a hole and slot it in. So they've, they've available in shapeways too. And obviously, <coughs> yeah, just drill a hole and slot it in. You did 12 different locos with it. So that's my answer to the issue we had. Okay, closing remarks. I always forget something. The bogey splashes, bit of super glue. Yeah, just tack join it. When you're happy, put a bit more glue in. The uh, smoke box door, all right, again, bit of glue. Or blue tack if you want a temporary join. Now, I use the K2 and the Freelance variant on this series because it has a bogey, so it's a little bit more complex than the others. But the principles are pretty much the same. And there's many different ways of making kits. I've just showed you a very easy, basic way of doing it. And if, you, if you're new to it, this will get you started. Many of you asked me to make it. I've quite enjoyed making the series. The next set of vids, I don't know what they will be. Maybe painting, maybe something else. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think of this series. Tell me what you would like to see. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know. I'll leave you with some photographs of the completed model to close this video out. Ah, just show you again, I might as well. This is where we are. With the V3 anyway. And this one's close to being done as well. The proper cater. So, yeah, tell me what you think, and I'll see you on the next video, whenever and whatever that may be. Alright, now the off button is on the other side, just about here.